With boldness, let us approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace as a timely help. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate Thursday in the seventh week of Easter. All the prayers between Ascension and Pentecost are the desire for the Holy Spirit among us to call forth the fire upon us, to set us alight, and that we can be this blazing light for others to see their way to Jesus. And so as we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist so that we can continue to be transformed into Jesus, we pause first to recognize the times that we have failed to be a witness to others, the times that we have failed to show by our thoughts and actions that we are people of Christ, and we ask for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees, so he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, or angels, or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred. And some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The Word of the Lord. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for you, in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life. 
Fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you loved them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the writings of St. Augustine from the four five hundreds, um, he was speaking about if people in the future we'll still be able to read different things if if the scriptures, of course, will survive, but will any of his writings survive? And he kept speaking about maybe in the year uh, 1082 or 1582, and then he came up with 1982. And it was uh, just something stirred in me to know that 1,500 years ago he wrote this, and just randomly making up a year, he picked a year that we were all alive in. Okay, he was born in 82, so he's fine. But just a year that we all would have been alive and said, wow, it's like he was looking ahead and knowing that we are around. Um, and so there's kind of this in the, in, the, in the gospel that Jesus is praying not only for those, this is part of his farewell discourse during the Last Supper, he's praying not only for those that were sitting there, but for all who will believe because of their word. And that is us that the scriptures written by those who heard, by those who saw, and that handing on of what happened, that we are still studying it, we are still reading it, and we are still experiencing it. That Jesus is speaking about us. We are the ones who are influenced by the words. We are the ones who are influenced by the message. And it is 2,000 years later, we still gather to break bread. We still gather to rejoice in the Spirit. We still gather to break open the Word and to hear the message of Jesus. So scriptures are alive. It is not just a book that was written. It is the Spirit of Jesus within it. And so we have reverence for scripture. We study it, we read it, we see how it can affect our lives, and it speaks back to us. Our different moods when we are reading it influence how we, how we hear and feel the message. 
But whatever our mood, somewhere in there there is an answer. Somehow there's a consolation. And so take comfort that even then Christ already saw you, already knew you, already rejoiced in your life. And it is for you that this Spirit is coming. It is for you that Christ died. And it is for you that Christ rose to prepare a place in heaven for you. All we can do is take comfort in that and remember that constantly. Even just for each of us, he died. Even for each of us, he sends us his spirit. And he greatly desires us to stay focused on that and come to be with him forever. Seeking to lead lives that give glory and praise to God, let us offer our prayers to the Father. For Pope Francis, may the Lord continue to safeguard and guide him as he shepherds us in the ways of faith, hope, and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may the grace of God perfect in them a desire for doing his will in their service. Let us pray to the Lord. For countries suffering from the effects of civil war or conflict, may the Prince of Peace grant them a lasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us in this community, may the Lord bless us and sustain us in our lives of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they be greeted this day by the risen Christ and all the angels in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. And for Bob Fitzgerald, the intention of this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh, hear our prayer. Most gracious God, hear the prayers we offer this day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, this holy truth. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us shares in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. We receive you, your body, bread, and Jesus Christ, not the of judgment. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
For those unable to physically receive the Eucharist, you can still receive the fullness of the graces of the Blessed Sacrament by making a spiritual communion. To make your spiritual communion, please repeat after me this prayer written by St. Alphonsus Liguri. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I go. For if I do not go away, the paraclete will not come to you, says the Lord. Alleluia. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring, and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mass again will be tomorrow morning at 9 here in the church. Uh, this weekend, uh, if you're, we're just encouraging, if your last name uh, begins with A through M, you can come either Saturday night at 4 or Sunday morning at 9. If your last name is N through Z, you come Saturday night at 6 or Sunday morning at 11. We'll see how many people come over the next couple weekends and we'll adjust from there. If we don't need that many masses because people are staying home, that's fine. If any of you are coming now because you don't want to come with the crowd on the weekend, that is also fine. Uh, but we will go through this together. Next week, mass will be Tuesday through Friday here in the church at 9. Uh, not going to adjust Thursday to 8 for a couple more weeks just so we can take advantage of this time together. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.